Yeah, yeah, DJ Spinner, you're checking out Distortion the Static. That's what's up right there. That's right, man. So people may not know exactly how many things that you do and how many things you're involved in. Uh, if you could just run down the line, let them know uh, some of your top, you know, top three attributes or so. Wow. Well, on the recording level, you know, I'm a producer, remixer. I've worked with, you know, everyone from Most Def to Farrah Moss to Eminem to Talib Kweli. Um, you know, I have several spectrums, several different, um, I guess, musical directions that I that I'm involved with. You know, primarily hip hop. That's that was my entry into the game. Uh, in the mid 90s, doing remixes for De La Soul, Das Effects. Those are like the first two big remixes that I've done. Um, I have my own group called the Jig Masters, independent hip hop group. We were a major staple in the in the underground hip hop movement in the mid to late 90s. <clears throat> but I also do. I also dabble in electronica. I'm big in the deep house soulful scene. Um, I have one record under my belt called Days Like This by Shauna Scoffrey. It's a remix that I did in like 1999. It's a huge anthem all over the world. And I also do some, you know, I dabble in soul music, you know, so I work with Eric Robeson, you know, quite a, quite a few people, man. Um, but then the, on the other side of, of, of what I do is the DJ side. And um, that's the other thing that I do. And I'm a DJ first, you know, I started off as a DJ. I started, I've been DJing for more than half my life. And some of the biggest events that I do, one of them is the uh, the Michael Jackson versus Prince tribute called Soul Slam. It's a New York-based event that happens annually, once a year, and I've been taking that all over the world. You know, here in San Francisco, it's probably, I would say San Francisco is probably the, next to New York is the best market that I do that party in. I've done it, I've been doing it here probably for like seven years now, five, no, about five, six years. And the other one is this, the Wonderful Party, which is the Stevie Wonder Tribute Night that I do with Bobito, a.k.a. Cool Bob Love. It's another yearly event, New York yearly event that I've taken all over the world. And once again, San Francisco is, you know, one of the hottest places that that party goes down in. And with that party, man, we've had the honor to have been blessed by Stevie Wonder himself. He, um, he, he He's turned up to several of the parties. Last year, we did it in a big venue called the Manhattan Center, and he showed up unannounced. The crowd was mesmerized. He got up on the stage, he started singing a cappella, singing songs a cappella. I mean, it was just a magical thing. So he's definitely aware of the party. Um, he's very grateful for it, and also, you know, I would say maybe my my top collaboration is, as a result of all of these parties, is doing remixes for Stevie. I've done two remixes for Stevie Wonder. Probably one of the only producers to have ever really been outsourced by him to do anything like that because he doesn't like people, you know, messing with his music. So, you know, I had the honor to, to be able to contribute to his legacy on that level. So, yeah, you know, production, remixing, you know, DJing, that's, that's what I do. Yeah. I mean, you've definitely sort of been the ambassador for representing Stevie Wonder for our generation, I like to say. Uh, what does it take to really, you know, sort of speak, do Stevie Wonder, at, you know, for an event? Well, you know, just like any other uh, tribute, I think it's a matter of really going, digging deep into his catalog, understanding his his works, you know, his message. Um, me as a DJ, I like to, you know, no matter what I'm doing, if I'm playing a party, it could be a hip-hop based party, it could be a multi-genre, across the board kind of party, and with these tribute parties, it's a matter of telling a story, it's a matter of, you know, painting a picture, having a beginning, middle, and an end, and just creating different vibes throughout the night, and the good thing about his music is, he has the soulful side of himself, he has the funky side, and he has the dance side, so, when you put it all together and the stuff that he's written for other people and the uh, the covers, like the, the people that have covered his music, you know, even the samples, like the records that have sampled him directly or sampled a record that he produced for someone, all of these elements make up a really good party, you know, and, you know, that's what it, that's what it takes. 
So, I mean, you, you, I think you're definitely trailblazing in terms of different types of music. So who do you like, to, who are you listening to right now? Like, who are you inspired by? And, you know, any type of music, vocalist, rapper, producer, who are some people that, you know, inspire you right now? Wow. <clears throat> um, well, I'm, I'm currently working on a new album, and I, I tend to drift away from things that are happen, happening currently. But I'll tell you who I admire. Um, Right now, I'm digging people like Flying Lotus because he's kind of pushing the 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 margin the, the margin of like what the standard is for hip hop hip hop beats. Ross G is another cat out of out of his camp that's really ill. Um, but I, but I also still love my traditional hip hop man. Like lately, I've been kind of vibing out on classic '90s stuff. You know, a lot of premier beats. Um, you know, Tribe, De La, like that stuff still, Pete Rock, and actually Pete Rock um, recently, I feel like there's something going on with him because I feel like he's kind of, he's been sparked. I've been hearing some new music, some new productions from him, and it seems like, he, and rhymes, he's on the mic again, and I think he's kind of like, he's on fire right now, you know, I think he's trying to, I think a lot of us from that era are kind of feeling like this is the time to save it. To save the to save that genre, to to save the music, save hip hop, and we're we're pretty much like just trying to keep the boom bap alive, you know. Dilla, rest his soul, you know, brothers like that, you know. We're just we've we've done a lot of things over the years, and we can't let that that legacy be tarnished by, you know, a lot of what's going on on the commercial side. So we you know we're just trying to keep that keep that moving. Yeah, that's what's up, man. So you want to talk about your new project and like features on it and just what people can expect? The, the latest thing that I've done is Sonic Smash came out in July of this year. Um, some of the artists you may know on there, I got Torre, I got uh, Fonte from Little Brother, I got Shabam Sadiq who's about to make a comeback as well, um, Ty Phoenix, uh, you know, Jig Masters, we got a cut on there. There's up and coming cats on there like Homeboy Sandman, Fresh Daily, Sputnik Brown, look out for that group out of New York, they're incredible. And, you know, the latest project is the Jig Masters. I've been working on a new Jig Masters album with Krim for the last four or five years. It's a work, long work in progress, but it's coming together, and I think it's going to be real exciting once it comes out. Right, definitely. I know people are going to be hungry for that, man. So uh, how can people uh, stay up to date with what you're doing online and everything? DJ Spinner, Facebook, you know, DJ Spinner. Uh, on MySpace is uh, myspace.com forward slash DJ Spinner from Brooklyn. I'm on Twitter. And DJSpinner.com. Those are the you know the the main four formats on cyberspace where you can right. see what's going on.